Hi, thanks for joining in. I'm Glenn. In this video, I'll show you an exercise which is great for developing your visual spatial ability. I'm showing you how to visualize tumbling a cube across a table. And then I'll leave some exercises for you at the end. Here's all you'll need to get started. Splat, pencil, ruler, and maybe an eraser. I'm going to suggest a starting point so that you don't run out of room. If you measure across seven centimeters and then measure up four centimeters, that's your starting point. And now a basic cue, bring a splat down onto the starting point. And then from that blip, trace around two lines, the center line, and from the blip around. Good. Step two, line up with that point and just draw two lines. And now rotate the splat to draw in those far two edges. Line up that corner with the corner and don't worry if there's a gap in your lines there because these are really only guidelines. So draw as light as you can, much lighter than you see me drawing here. Great, now back to the starting point, we're going to draw in the left ellipse. An ellipse is a circle that's tilted slightly away from you. This is the corner that the cube will roll on. Uh, so I'm going to draw an arrow. You don't need to draw this arrow. I'm just um, leaving it in here so you can see how I drew it. So this arrow has some width. That's the top of the arrow. Come down to the point and join. To roll your cube in a straight line means to hold a ruler at that angle and slide the splat straight back. Keep going until there's just a little gap between the corners and that's where we're going to start drawing the next cube. Hey, do you remember there was three steps in drawing the cube? That's step one finished. This is step two. And rotate step three. Now for the tumble, can you imagine where that circle ends up on that cube? Remember that we're tumbling the cube on that edge. So it'll go over like that. All right, so that circle will roll upwards. And so on the other drawing, it'll appear there. So to do that, just put your splat back in the original position and select the top ellipse. Okay, the next tumble will be on that edge. So just for fun, I'm going to draw an arrow in the direction that I'm going to tumble it. The back of the arrow. And that's the arrow head. Join it to a point. Notice how the two arrows look different. The next cube, I'm tumbling in a different direction. We're still going to use the ruler and slide the splat along until there's a gap between the cubes and then go ahead and draw your third cube. There's the same three steps, just sped up a little bit. If you're looking at three cubes on your page now, you're doing an awesome job. And again, ladies and gentlemen, it's tumble time. Let's work out where that circle ends up on this drawing. If we follow the arrow, it's tumbling in this direction. So it should appear in that face. We just need to draw it on that one. And that's simple. Just replace the splat, original position, and trace around the right ellipse. Just for the advanced drawers, I'm going to show you a step on how to make those circles look like they're sunk into the cube. Start with it back on the original position, put your pencil along that edge and slide and draw. We could do the same thing to the top circle, slide on that edge and draw. So the general rule is you slide the splat towards the center of the cube like that, but you draw on the outside of the ellipse. Boom. And now everyone's drawing again. Watch as I draw a rectangle on this face of the cube. I've got the splat always straight up and down, and I'm only using the edges of the splat. I'm only using the splat angled lines. It doesn't matter what order you draw your lines in, as long as you have them all on the splat angles. Can you see the difference between this rectangle and the last cube? You're right if you said the rectangle's now higher because it's rotated. Once we tumble or roll a cube to this position, then the rectangle will be underneath. We won't see it. To make the rectangle look 3D, I'm matching the corner of the splat there. Place your pencil on that edge so that you can slide it in the splat direction. Copy those two lines and then just draw that little corner in there. 
Excellent. We're going to do the same thing. Slide, copy those two lines, and then mark in the little corner. Great. Everyone drawing. Imagine that there's something hidden under that face that's flat on the table. But once I rotate the cube, I'd see it there. In what shape? A triangle. Go halfway in between those corners and place a mark. Now draw a line between that point and the two bottom corners. And you've drawn a triangle. If you'd like to draw a smaller triangle, then just treat that one you've just drawn as an outline or as a guideline and just sketch in a slightly smaller one. Can you imagine what the triangle will look like when we draw it onto this cube? Remember it's tumbled over. Well that point, or apex, it's halfway along that edge, will be found by going halfway along that edge. That's the point. The base of the triangle will tumble over and it will now be vertical. So let's do the same as before. We'll join the apex of the triangle to the base, those two corners, and we've done it. If you want to use a ruler, you can neatly draw a triangle inside. I think I like the look of just a small triangle, so I'm going to go back and erase some of those lines. On tracing paper, let's have a sneak peek. We need to slide this triangle to make it look 3D, and then of course draw in the corners. Uh, some of it will be hidden inside, let's rub that out, so that's what we need to do. So using the splat, you simply take each of the corners on the splat angle back a little bit, the same amount. And once you've got three points, you just need to join them up. Remember some of it was hidden? That's why I'm not drawing in that little part there. And the same at the bottom. Join the dots. Just don't draw in that little bit that's hidden. Cool. So draw in your corner there, and you're looking at a 3D triangle. Let's do the same approach here. Join the dots, draw in the corner, great. Now that I'm finished my drawing, this is the time where I come back with my sharp pencil and tidy up my drawing. Now we go around the very outside with a darker line called a cutting line. Imagine the light source was shining on the cubes from up here. If the light's shining in that direction, it means we'd get a shadow underneath there, and even more so because it's recessed in. Uh, if you're trying to render using a pen or a pencil, then just do lots of lines that are parallel to each other. So just do careful strokes one at a time. Drawing long lines in this direction is even more difficult. It's a real challenge, but give it a go. It's an excellent exercise to develop your hand skills, which means you'll be able to quickly sketch your designs as you get more practice. Over in this circle, it's really tricky to see what's vertical. So I'm giving myself a light guideline, and then I'm referring to that line as I try to draw lots of vertical lines. Cool. For a little bit of shadow in this top corner, start with your lines close together and then space them out. This edge is a little bit longer, so I'm going to keep my lines close together a little further down and then start spacing them out. That's called a gradation. I'm giving myself a splat angle guideline and I'm trying to keep all my lines parallel. Inside the ellipse, I'm adding shadow right here because that's facing away from the light source that we talked about before. So your shadow usually faces away from your light source. Now you know why I've picked this edge from the two inside the triangle to shade. Adding a little shadow underneath your cubes is a great way to make your cubes look like they're sitting on a surface rather than just floating in the air and that's going to help imagine them tumbling across a table. Let me show you a standard way to add a shadow. We start off with a ruler and we draw a short horizontal line. Then copying that line, draw it all the way out just past the corner. Now copy that splat angle 
and continue the shadow till it disappears behind the cube. So that's a really standard way for drawing an easy shadow. Use a sharp pencil and lots of parallel strokes to render your shadow. Watch as I go through this process again. That's my horizontal line. That's on the splat angle, go past the corner. And then on the splat angle again, disappear behind. Easy. You've got this. And finally, render or colour in the shadow. And you are finished. Well done. I'm going to leave you with an exercise. Draw one cube, some shapes in the faces, and then pass it to someone else to see if they can tumble it. I've quickly sketched four different cubes here as examples. Try tumbling these if you want to. Thanks so much for joining in. Click like if you've got something out of this tutorial and consider joining the Splat team by subscribing to the channel. I'm Glenn. Bye for now.